الله فاطر الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم وملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الأكرم بالشرف الأشم والنور الأتم وكتاب المحكم خير واد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم ونصلي ونسلم ونبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدث في الدين بدعة وكل بدعة في الدين ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله وحسن عباده We begin to read khutbah after the battle of Hunayn Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received a massive bounty of war after this battle. And so much money was he received, he started giving it to the new Muslims that had just entered Islam. So when Arabi came and he yanked the shirt of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Murli min Give me some of the money that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given you. The narrator says he pulled it so hard that a mark was on the front of the Prophet's neck. The Prophet وسلم, being the merciful individual that he was, he turns to this man and he smiles. And he goes, look in between these two mountains. You will find cattle. They are all yours. So the man Says, أَتَسْتَهْزِئُ بِي Are you insulting me? قَالَ So the man goes and starts pushing the cattle towards his home. And as he is pushing it, he keeps looking back, waiting for someone to stop him. The narrator says that when the man returns to his tribe, he says, 
يا قوم اسلموا فإن محمد يعطي عما لا يخشى الفقر Oh my people believe Muhammad is giving sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to those that never want to be poor. It's as if he had an infinite amount of money and he is just giving and giving and giving. And it seems that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is doing that because he saw things in a different way. He had a different scale in mind. The way he viewed life was differently than the way the normal person views things. And we see it more clearly in hadith Ummina Aisha radiallahu anha. Where she, leave, where she left for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the shoulder meat. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her, ma baqiya ya Aisha? What remains of Aisha from the sheep that we brought? Ya Rasulullah, ma baqiya illa al-katif? Everything I gave away for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only thing that remains is the shoulder. So he teaches her and he teaches all of us. Qala ya Aisha. بَقِيَ كُلَّهُ إِلَّا الْكَتِفِ Everything we gave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what remained, that's what will remain till the day of judgment. Except the shoulder. Except the shoulder. Why did I begin my khutbah in this manner? Many a times we see our lives and the difficulty that we are going through. And we think that this is it. We get challenged by atheists and non-Muslims If your God is all-powerful If your God is all-just Why is there this evil, quote-unquote, in the world? And we as Muslims tend to forget This dunya isn't the end This dunya isn't the end This is a temporary life for us all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءُكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٍ You were unaware of the situation. You were unaware of the hereafter. You are unaware of what you do not see and do not know. But when you pass away, we have alleviated that barrier. And now your vision is clear. Now you start realizing the scales. You start realizing the weight and the value of the things that you do. You start being like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Realizing that this dunya is nothing more than just a game. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. He says, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا No, have certainty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إنما, it means only. Only this dunya, only is what? Oh Allah. Laibun, walahun, wazinatun, watafakhrun, baynakum, watakathrun, fil amwali wal awlad. That this life, this dunya, even in dunya, in the Arabic word, means lowly, is nothing more than play and amusement and beautifying yourself and boasting about wealth and children. A scholar gave a beautiful parable just to show us an example to ourselves to make our lives easier. If any of us have ever played Monopoly and we're playing with our children and we become very rich in the game and your children ask you, can I please have an extra thousand dollars in this deal? And you're smiling and you're like, fine, take the extra thousand. Your son or daughter goes, Oh my God, how generous is my father? He gave me an extra thousand. But to you it means nothing. You know it's just a game. You know it's monopoly money. And this is how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw this dunya. So when they asked for the dunya, he gave them without question. He gave them without thinking. Because he knew the real wealth, the real value is in the akhirah. And we will see it the second we pass. And sadly, every single one of us knows that the day will come when you will pass. And the first thing that you've forgotten is your name. You're no longer Mustafa or Muhammad 
or Ali. You become al marhum And I want us to close our eyes for a moment and picture this. Picture yourself in a box, two meters long, one meter wide, being dropped into a hole six feet in the ground. The dirt being put on, our, on, your, on your box. Yes, your family is sad. Yes, your friends and family are crying. But soon enough, they will leave you. Soon enough, you'll be all alone. And yes, it will be difficult on the first day. But as the days continue, your family lives on. And you are all alone. How are you going to prepare for that day? What are you going to do when you are questioned the questions we are all aware of? Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, he used to come to the Qubur and he would cry. One of the Sahaba were sitting next to Uthman, said, Ya Uthman, يذكر الجنة والنار فلا تبكي ويذكر القبور فتبكي Jannah and Nar is mentioned and you don't cry, you don't shed a tear. But the grave is mentioned once and you begin to cry to the point where your beard becomes wet. Why? He says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ الْقَبْرَ أَوَّلُ مَنَازِهُ الْآخِرَةِ فَإِنْ نَجَى مِنْهَا فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَيْسَرْ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْجُوا مِنْهَا فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَشَدْ the Qabr is the first stage of Al-Akhirah. If you succeed in the Qabr, if you succeed in the grave, everything after is easier. And if you fail in the grave, everything after is, is harder. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, مَا رَأَيْتُ مَنْظَرًا قَطْ إِلَّا وَالْقَبْرُ أَفْضَحُ مِنْهِ I've seen nothing, nothing, period except with the grave being more difficult than it, more of a struggle than it. So ask yourself, what am I going to do when it's my turn? How am, I, how am I going to respond to the questions that are going to be asked of me? What is the situation of my family members and friends that have already passed away? Ali ibn Abi Talib was once walking through the graves and he says Ya ahl al-diyar al-muhishah wal qubur al-mudlimah antum lana sabaq wa nahu lakum taba O you people that are sitting in dark lonely graves you are leading us but we will one day follow you and he says Amma al-diyura faqad al-sukinat your homes that you owned, someone has lived in them. Your spouses have all moved on. Your wealth has been distributed. That is what we have. What do you have? So he turns to his companions. And he says, إِذَا أُذِنَ لَهُمْ لِلرَّدِّ لَقَالُوا If they were allowed to answer, they would say, إِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى Truly the best sustenance for the journey in the grave is taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we remember death? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, كَفَى بِالْمَوْتِ مَوْعِضًا Enough of a reminder is death. Enough of a reminder is our old age and our white hair. How can we not see people die all around us and not prepare for what is coming? One of the signs of the Day of Judgment is Mawtul Fujat. The death that just happens. A young person looks healthy one day, the next morning they are gone. People in their 30s and 40s and 50s. Sometimes without cause, without a reason, they are no longer with us. Have we prepared? 
have we prepared? For when we raise from the grave and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ When we raise from the grave and we run away from the people that we love the most, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, you run away, you flee from your brother. You flee from your sister. The people that are closest to you, the people that lived with you. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ Your parents. The people that when you are scared, you used to run to on the day of judgment, you will be scared and you will run away from them. You will say, Nafsi, 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 Nafsi. Have we prepared ourselves for that day? Have we prepared ourselves for the question? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength to prepare ourselves. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu al ghafur rahim. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. We know that death will come. We know that our time will one day come. What have we done? What can we do to prepare? The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he saw a group excessively laughing. Excessively laughing. So he says and he reminds them and reminds us Constantly remind yourself of the destroyer of desire which is death Remember death. Because no matter your situation, the law says, no matter how tight, no matter how difficult your life is, when you remind yourself of death, that situation becomes easier. When you remind yourself of an akhirah, that situation becomes easier. And no matter how successful and happy you are, when you remind yourself of death, you begin to humble yourself. You realize that this success, this happiness that I am having is only in the dunya. So the Prophet وسلم, is reminding us to remind ourselves of death. Number two, the Prophet وسلم, he says, Man ahabba liqa Allah ahabba Allah liqa'ah. Whoever loves the interaction with Allah, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love to meet with him. How can you love to meet someone if you don't know them? How can we love to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much do we know about Allah? <coughs> Sayyidina Bilal ibn Rabah on his deathbed, his wife is crying and he's saying, Wa I'm so sad. Sayyidina Bilal responds, Wa faraha, I am so happy. Ghadan sanalqa al-ahibbah, Muhammadan wa hisbah. Tomorrow I'm going to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's excited for death because he wants to see his beloved, his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is our situation going to be when we are on our deathbed? How are we going to act? Third, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in a hadith Qudsi, he says, Inna Allah la yarfa'u al-darajatu ila abdi salihi fi al-jannah, fayakulu ya rabbi, min ayna li hadha, fayakul bi istighfari waladuka lak. On the day of judgment, you're in Jannah, and you see your rank going higher and higher and higher. Rabbi, where is this coming from? Why is my rank going higher in Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Because your son asked forgiveness for you. Because your child asked for forgiveness for you, your rank becomes higher. So ask yourself, 
when you pass away, is my child going to make dua for me or make dua against me? Is he going to say, good riddance, finally he left. I couldn't wait for him to leave. I wish he left earlier. Or is he going to be making dua for his father in every salah? The ulama have said that in between the sujood, you should be making dua to your parents. Oh Allah, forgive me and forgive my parents. And some ulama have narrated that if you don't do that, you are an unrighteous child. You have not given your parents their right. So as a reminder to all of us in sujood, right after you get up and you're sitting, make dua for your parents. Alas, that dua may be the thing that gives them the higher in rank. Now what's our homework for the week? How are we going to make the ilm and turn it to amal? The first and foremost, we're going to humble ourselves and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua for tawfiq. If you noticed when the mu'adhin was making adhan, he was saying, Hayya ala salah. Come to prayer. Hayya ala falah. Come to success. We are told by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're supposed to say, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I have no power or strength without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can hear the adhan, but I might not get up to pray. I might not have the strength, I might not have the will. So if it isn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will do nothing and I will succeed in nothing. So make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with tawfiq. Ask him for tawfiq. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Man khayyu nas Man ahabbu nas Man khayyu nas ya Rasulullah? Qala man tala umruh wa hasuna amaluh. The one that has a long life and has excellence in their actions, has goodness in their actions, does good, righteous things. So then he asked, Ya Rasulullah, wa man aswa inas, who is the worst of people? He has man tala umru wa sa'a amalu. The worst of people is the one that has long life but does bad deeds. So make dua, oh Allah, أطل في عمري وأحسن في عملي Oh Allah, give me long life and righteous actions. The Prophet Muhammad was narrated saying, Allahumma ba'ilmika al-ghayb wa kudratika al-khalq ahini ma alimtu al-hayata khayran li wa tawafani idha alimtu al-wafata khayran li Oh Allah, by your knowledge and your power, Give me long life if you think that is good for me. If I'm going to be doing righteous deeds, give me a long life. But if you think I'm going to do bad deeds, oh Allah, shorten my life before I commit those deeds. So the first and foremost, make dua every day, every opportunity that you can, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. Number two, Learn about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I've said it time and time again on this minbar. We have no more excuses. YouTube is filled with individuals speaking about the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have no excuses to learning about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kul in kuntum tuhibboon Allah fattabi'ooni yuhbibukum Allah. If you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can we follow his footsteps without knowing him? Number three, the people of Jannah, they regret nothing. لا يحصروا شيئاً ما عندهم حصرات Except for one thing. Except for one action which is dhikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So constantly have the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on your tongue. So that if at any moment you are, that is your last breath, inshaAllah your last breath is filled with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, 
invest in your tomorrow. Invest in your tomorrow. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمُ انْقَطَعَ عَمَلَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ If the son of Adam dies, all of his actions stop. Except for three. Three actions that continue after you are gone. He says, صَلَقَةٌ جَارِيَةٌ An ongoing charity. Give to a masjid. Give to a school. As you way out, put five dollars into the masjid with the intention, this is a sadaqah jariyah. Oh Allah, I want to see this on the day of judgment. Oh Allah, this is for no one except you. I don't want anyone to know about this five dollars that I'm putting in. Only between me and you. In hopes that on the day of judgment, I see that sadaqah jariyah. Number two, our ilm yantafa'u bih. For those of us that have young children, don't let anyone teach them Surah Al-Fatiha except you. Don't let anyone, if you have young siblings, be the first to teach them Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? So that when they recite it for the rest of their lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them reward and gives you reward. Constantly. If you have the opportunity to learn and to teach, even better. But at the very least, Surah Al-Fatiha. Your son or daughter or brother or sister will learn Surah Al-Fatiha because of you and that will be inshallah what enters you into Jannah. And the third, he says, A waladun salihun yad'u lah. Or a righteous child that makes dua for them. So make dua for your parents. Be righteous children and make dua for your parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly remind us of death and prepare us for death. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt. وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا سابا لمن اهتدى اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا سابا لمن اهتدى عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وإنها الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقم الصلاة One quick request